What's up, people? Time to take a look at some upcoming college football games. Got some stuff going on tomorrow, but um, I'll be perfectly honest. It's a pretty small slate of games that have my interest. Uh, some of my favorite college teams are on by, like Kentucky. Some of them are playing on networks that uh, most people aren't going to have access to. Uh, Tennessee's playing um, some very, very weak opponent that is not a game that you put on national TV generally. Uh, I think Notre Dame is also off, so they have a couple guys that I like, like, well, mostly Patterson, but uh, can't watch them. The games are not great. But we do have a few big ones here. So this week is going to be all about quality over quantity, I guess. That's what I'm going to say. And uh, hopefully it'll be enough. Hopefully there's enough going on. So tomorrow, 9 a.m. By the way, tomorrow I will be doing an all-day stream. At least I believe I will be. I will be uh, streaming... 10 hours to celebrate getting to 10,000 subs on YouTube. I will obviously won't be here literally for 10 hours, but I'm going to do what I can, and the stream should be running for about 10 hours in totality. So we're going to kind of be watching a lot of this stuff together. It's going to be informal, but I, we're going to have fun with it regardless. So anyway, 9 a.m., we got two games. This first one, Ohio State... I mean, there, there, there's a lot going on with Ohio State, right? They got Stroud. They got, uh, I think his name is Zach Harrison. They've got Ruggles. And, and C.J. Stroud alone, he's uh, so good. Having such an, uh, a stellar career at Ohio State and is such an intriguing prospect that I, I feel like that alone makes Ohio State must-see TV because we're potentially in the market for a quarterback. But Iowa's not good. It, it's not going to be a competitive game in all likelihood. It's not a game where you're going to necessarily learn a lot about Ohio State. They should just win by three or four touchdowns minimum. But, hey, Ohio State's always worth watching simply because of C.J. Stroud. But you throw in the guys they have on that defense. And by the way, I, I, I should mention a guy like a Marvin Harrison Jr. who won't be in the draft this Upcoming draft, I assume, but could become available in a future draft and is a prospect that I'm really starting to get a little bit of a shine to. So if you want to watch for stuff like that, that's cool too. But uh, we have that game at 9 a.m., uh, Iowa versus Ohio State. Kind of interesting, but but it doesn't hold up to the other 9 a.m. game. Syracuse versus Clemson over on ABC. I mean, Clemson's Clemson. They got DJU, they've got guys like Miles Murphy and Brissy on the defense. They're, they're one of my most must-see uh, college teams this year for uh, Trenton Simpson as well, of course. He's my favorite linebacker in this draft by far. Um, I, I can't say enough about the intrigue that Clemson is offering, and Syracuse is really good. Syracuse is 13th ranked in the nation, so they are going to make Clemson work. Syracuse doesn't have any players that jump out to me as being super interesting, but Syracuse is a really good team, so they're going to make Clemson work for this. And if DJU can have a big game against Syracuse, not only is he going to become more intriguing as a prospect, he's also more likely to enter the upcoming draft instead of staying back another year. So great game there. And uh, then you go up to 12.30, and the only game that really does it for me that's on a major network at 12.30, UCLA versus Oregon. Oregon, oh, excuse me, Oregon kind of speaks for itself at this point. They've got two linebackers that I like, although I will admit I'm starting to lose a little bit of interest in uh, Sewell because he's just kind of slow to me, and he doesn't cover, but I like Flo, and uh, their left guard Bass is also an intriguing day three prospect. But we need to talk a little bit about UCLA here. They're throwing their hat in the ring, not just as a great team, but as a team that has some prospects that should be interesting to us. Um, some people are really into Charbonnet, their running back. Uh, I think he's going to be a late first or early second round pick. I'm not really into that, especially when we just drafted Kenneth Walker. But some people are super high on Charbonnet and uh, their quarterback, uh, Thompson. 
uh, look, the, some of these quarterbacks that we thought were going to be big prospects this year starting to fade by the wayside. There are going to be other guys who rise up. And it seems like Thompson is one of the guys who is rising up to replace some of the guys that we thought would maybe take that step this year, like Spencer Rattler or Tanner McKee. So UCLA, they've got some things going on there that are at least worth keeping an eye on. And if you're going to be watching this game anyway, because it's a huge Pac-12 showdown between two Pac-12 teams that look poised to maybe win the conference, you may as well keep an eye out for stuff like that too. So that's really the only game at 12th in the in this window that did much for me. There are a couple other okay ones, but it was kind of slim. There are a couple good games that aren't on major networks. If you get them, you can certainly watch that. But uh, for me, I would just recommend keeping your focus on the UCLA versus Oregon game. And that'll take you to 4 p.m., where on ESPN we have a great game. We got Mississippi State versus Alabama. Alabama loaded with prospects, Bryce Young, Will Anderson, um, all those defensive ends they got, Henry To'o, To'o, To, uh, even their kicker, Will Reichardt, although, hey, he kind of blew the game against uh, um, a Tennessee, so maybe his stock's a little bit lower right now, but Alabama is Alabama, worth watching for many different reasons, prospect-wise. And Mississippi State, Will Rogers, have fun dealing with Alabama after Alabama loses and gets embarrassed against Tennessee like that. So if Will Rogers can play well against Alabama in this game, then uh, big, big ups to him. Because uh, that is an Alabama animal that is wounded. So intrigued to see what he can do. He's one of these quarterbacks who could be rising up the boards as a couple of these other guys fade down it. And then at the same time, approximately 4.30 p.m., we got a game on ABC. It's not much, but I want to really draw attention to one thing here. 4.30 ABC, Minnesota versus Penn State. It's not a big-time game. Neither of these teams are amazing. Um, Penn State doesn't really have any prospects that jump out to me at this moment. But Minnesota has one guy. And the reason why I'm drawing attention to him this week is because Minnesota has not made my list yet. They have a center that is starting to grow on me. It's a Schmitz. Schmitz has been... I, I had a, the opportunity to look at him a little bit last week and look at some of the stuff he's done over the course of the season. He's good. He's consistent. He's been a real rock for that offensive line for the Golden Gophers. And with Patterson not necessarily dominating things right now for Notre Dame, I still like him but he hasn't asserted himself as some dominant center prospect. A guy like Schmitz could easily be an appealing day two pick, maybe even early day three. But they're on national TV, ABC. This is your opportunity to get a look at him in a live game. I've, <clears throat> I've been impressed with him, and I think he makes a lot of sense for a Seahawks team that is probably going to need a center next year. So that's my recommended viewing schedule. It's short. It's pretty juicy. Not a ton of games that caught my attention, but we've got enough here. And then, of course, the nighttime slot, we got Washington, and they're playing um, They're playing the uh, late slot at 7.30 there, and I'm, I don't know how high we are on Penix at this point, but I'm going to be watching that game anyway, so why not? All right, I'll see you guys later. Let me know what you think.